Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to continue our discussion on pressure. And as you know, when the pressure meets a certain area, then it's going to generate force. So specifically, the topic that we will be discussing today is called hydrostatic force. And this covers flat surfaces and also curved surfaces. Let's take a look. Now, we already know that P is equal to rho g h. Okay, now imagine if you have a plane that is perpendicular to the water surface. Okay, so you have water here and then you have plane here. And this is your water level. Now because pressure is equal to rho g h, we know that pressure here is zero and then as we go deeper, the pressure is going to increase. So what we are really solving here is two things. First is the magnitude of that force and the second one is the location of that force. Where does this force act? Now let's say that this is the centroid of the surface. Let's say that this surface is simply a flat plate. Okay, this is the side view of the surface and it's just a flat plate. Okay, so this will be the centroid. But does the force acts on centroid? I don't think so because the profile of the pressure looks something like this. So even though the surface is square, but the profile of the pressure is actually kind of triangle, right? And the centroid of a triangle is actually a third from its base, isn't it? So this is your center of pressure or we call it CP. So your force is actually acting here. It will act a little bit lower than your surface centroid. Now this is quite simple because it is just a surface that is perpendicular to your water level. Now what if the surface is a little bit inclined, something like this. Now let's take a look. So if this is your water level and you have your surface here. Okay, so this is your surface. And let's say this is something that's holding that surface. And you have water here. Okay, and there's nothing at the bottom of the surface, meaning that you know all the pressure, all the forces will be heading this direction. Okay, but let's erase that first because we're gonna have a look at that later. Now, there are a few things that you need to look for when you have this sort of problem. And first, of course, I told you before is the magnitude of the force. And the second thing is the location. And we're going to try to find it one by one. First, let's take a look at how to find the magnitude. But before that, let me label everything. So this is the inclined angle, which is alpha. And let's say that your surface is a random shape. Okay, so it looks something like this. Instead of a simple surface such as square. So if it looks something like this, it's very difficult to calculate area, for example. So if we are dealing with this kind of surface, you need to use integration in order to find almost everything. So instead of calculating the whole area, I'm going to split this into a few strips. And I'm going to call this DA. Okay, so this is DA. And therefore, at the side of the surface here, this is your DA. And we know that the relationship between force and area is simply force equal to pressure times area, okay? So if pressure is rho g h, then force is rho g h times a, okay? And if I were to find force at this surface and I have h here, okay? So my force over there will be rho g h dA, isn't it? Because that tiny little area is called dA. And let's say that the centroid of this area is here. I'm going to call it C. And then the center of pressure equivalent to this center of pressure. We know that this is going to be a little bit lower than the centroid, isn't it? So I'm going to put it here and call it CP. 
and you know that the total force actually acts at CP. So the location is actually here. This is the location of the force. Okay, and it acts on CP. Now let's define a few other parameters before we move on to the mathematical derivation of how do you find magnitude and location. So if I draw this line here, which is perpendicular to the inclined surface, and I'm going to label the inclined distance from the water level to the centroid as y bar. And the distance between the center of pressure and this line, I'm going to call it y, p, and also the distance between this surface, the little tiny surface that we draw earlier, and I'm going to call this y. Now let's take a look at this problem mathematically using the labels that we have put here. We know that force equal to pressure times area, but when you have to integrate that area, your force becomes integration of the whole area pressure times dA. Does it make sense? And we know that pressure is equal to rho gh, and from this figure, let's find out what is h, okay? So h is this distance, so if I draw a triangle, so this will be your h, and this is your alpha, and this is your y, isn't it? Okay, so this y, right? So h is actually y sine alpha. Right, let's just replace it here in our equation. So this is y sine alpha. So immediately pressure becomes rho g y sine alpha. So f becomes integration of a rho g y sine alpha dA. And because rho g and sine alpha are constants, we can take it out of the integration. So we only have to integrate y dA. And now let's take a look at the figure again. Okay. Now I also have here y bar and if I want to find y bar, I need to multiply it with area, total area. So y bar times total area is actually equal to the integration of the total area for y times dA, isn't it? Therefore y bar is actually Integration of y dA over A. Okay, now let's replace it here. So y bar, let me write it again, equal to 1 over A integration for the whole area y dA. Okay, do you notice the similarity here? So basically, you can just replace integration of y dA into rho g sine alpha y bar times A. Okay, and y bar sine alpha, let's take a look at this. So to not confuse everyone, let's draw another triangle. Okay, now this is your alpha and this is your y bar. Okay, so what will be this side? This side will be h bar. So h bar is the vertical distance from the water level to the centroid of the area is the vertical distance. So y bar sine alpha equal to h bar. And I'm going to replace it here with rho g h bar area. And I'm going to call rho g h bar as pressure at centroid. Can I do that? So force in the end becomes pressure at centroid times area. Okay, and this is actually very important because we just solved one element of the problem, which is the magnitude. So the magnitude of the force acting on a plane is actually pressure at the centroid times area. But even though the way to find the magnitude is by using the pressure at the centroid, we know that the force does not act at the centroid. The force acts a little bit lower than the centroid, which is called center of pressure. Now that we've handled magnitude, let's take a look at how to find the location. Specifically, how do we find yp? Now let's figure out how we can find yp. And in order to find yp, you need to perform a little bit more calculation. Okay, so yp is given as y bar plus i y bar times area. Let me explain to you what exactly 
each of these terms mean okay i think you know some of it already so yp is the center of pressure y bar is the centroid and this is also centroid a is the area of the surface so surface area and i is called the second moment of area I think you will study a little bit more about second moment of area in your solid mechanics class. But for the time being, let's just use this equation in order to find the center of pressure. And to find the second moment of area, there are specific formula that you need to use depending on the shape of the area. For example, if we take a look at this figure, right? If the area is square or rectangular, then the second moment of area is given as bh cube over 12. And let's say the surface is triangle, then I is equal to BH cube over 36. And for circle, it is pi D to the power of 4 divided by 64. And so does semicircle, ellipse, and semi ellipse. So each of these shapes has its own formula for second moment. However, for example, for rectangular shape, okay, we know that the equation is BH cube over 12 isn't it so which one is b and which one is h now back to our figure here we know that i for rectangle is b h cube over 12. now let's say for example that this surface is rectangle okay let's say that this surface is now rectangle okay it looks something like this and which edge is b and which edge is h okay so what happens is that the edge that the force cuts into, for example, the force cuts into this edge, right? It cuts into this edge, right? So if it cuts into that edge, that should be your H, okay? In this equation, okay? And the other edge will be your B, right? So that's how you determine which one is B and which one is H. So back to our figure here, that's how you determine B and H for triangle as well. Okay, so the edge that the force cuts into is H. So the other edge is B. Alright, but be careful that this is not H as in rho G H. Okay, this is H that relates with moment of area or I. Okay, everyone, I know that I cannot see you but I can feel the tension in your face right now. So don't worry too much about it because after this, we're going to take a look at an example. It's easier for me to just show you how to solve a problem using these equations rather than explaining too much about it. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.